All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna be talking about how to backup a Synology NAS using Hyper Backup and RSync to a FreeNAS or TrueNAS server. All right, so today we're actually back in FreeNAS 11.3, and that's because when I was upgrading to TrueNAS 12, I actually had a slight issue in RC1 where my SMB speeds were really, really, really low. And I think there was a slight hardware compatibility issue, and so I actually had to revert the entire thing back to FreeNAS 11.3. I have actually heard that the issue should have been fixed with a one firmware update of my R630 and also the new TrueNAS Core 12 full release. However, I have a ton of stuff going on right now and I like to be able to make sure I get all my videos through and that way I'm just gonna be updating later on. And the thing is between FreeNAS 11 and TrueNAS Core 12, it's more or less the same UI and so the instructions I give you here will work in both these versions just fine. And so the way we're gonna be setting this up is locally, but with TrueNAS Core 12, you can use an OpenVPN client to set this up really easily. And so if you'd like to do this remotely and have a true offsite backup from a Synology NAS to a TrueNAS, I would recommend setting up an OpenVPN server on your Synology NAS, then setting up OpenVPN client on your TrueNAS. That way you can connect back over an encrypted connection and you're not gonna have any trouble with that. You don't have to open up ports on the remote network, which you might not have access to, and it's overall just very secure. All right, so the protocol we're gonna be using here is rsync, where technically you could just open up the rsync port, but please do not do this. rsync really is just not the most secure format, and so I'd really just recommend you use an open VPN server, but if you're in a pinch and you really trust rsync's authentication, I guess technically you could use rsync, but user beware, please. All right, and so the first thing we're gonna to do to set this up is we're gonna go ahead and log into our FreeNAS or TrueNAS instance. And so as you can see right here, I've already done that. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create a account with a user. And so to do that, it's really easy. All we have to do is go into accounts, users, and just click this add button right here. And so first off, just give it a name and a username and a password. For this, I will do one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and so now we can just call it a new primary group and we're gonna be fine. So all of these are just going to work for us. So we're gonna just go ahead and click save and I don't need to. So now we've got this new Synology user. So now what we need to do is we're probably gonna to wanna to set up a data set for the backup to go to. And so under that, we're gonna do storage and we're going to go into pools and we're just gonna go ahead and create a new data set within our pool. We'll call it for backup, and we'll let these all just be default. You could try upping the compression level, but realistically, Synology is already gonna be compressing it since we're using hyper backup, so it's probably not gonna get you much. It would probably get you a fair amount if you were using just an rsync single version, in which case I would highly recommend turning on a high level of compression because it's just a backup. It doesn't have to necessarily be fast, especially if you're gonna be doing this over remote connection. And so giving it extra CPU cores for your compression can really save you some space if it's not already compressed. And so for this, I'm just gonna leave these basic and we're just gonna go ahead and click save. And now we're gonna go ahead and give that Synology user full access to it. So we're just gonna go into edit permissions and we're going to choose the user, which is Synology, and we're just gonna click apply user. And so now all we have to do is click save, and it will set it up for us. All right, and so now we've just created this data set, essentially a folder that will allow our Synology to back up to this place. And we've created this Synology user, which will be used for authentication. All right, and so now our next step is to set up rsync, which is the protocol that we're gonna be using to have the Synology and the FreeNAS or TrueNAS talk. And so to do that, we just go into services, go into rsync right here, and we're first gonna just configure it with actions. So now we're gonna go into rsync module, which is what we're gonna use. We're gonna click add, and we're going to say, we'll call it backup, and we're going to say where it is, and that is under mount, speed, for backup, and select that. Access mode, we need read and write, Maximum connections, we'll do two. And user, we're gonna select that Synology. 
And so we're also going to select Synology as the user, as the group. And now we need to edit the hosts allow. And we're just gonna go ahead and click star for hosts allow. All right, and so now we're just gonna go ahead and click save and we should be good. All right, and so now we've configured it. We need to go back into services really quickly and now set up to one run and two start automatically. So click run and click start automatically. So now this rseq datum should be running. So now let's go back into our Synology and we're going to go ahead and go into hyper backup. If you don't have hyper backup, just grab it from the package center, really easy to use. And so now we're going to click on hyper backup. We're going to add a new one and a data backup task. And we're going to say either an rsync or an rsync copy. So these are two different things. Rsync will essentially use the regular hyper backup method where it creates this .hbk file that's compressed and has all of your data in it. It supports multiple versions and a lot smarter things. Rsync copy, however, just copies the files so it essentially mirrors the two between the two devices. That's not to say that if you delete something on the free NAS, it will not be deleted on the Synology, but it will be recopied the next time hyper backup runs. And so you need to choose which one's better for you. The regular rsync will give you better options, such as version control and things like that. The rsync copy will give you really easy access to your files. So say you'd like to be able to use this free NAS build as a replacement for your Synology if your Synology goes down. If you were to set up rsync copy and SMB with a free NAS, you could switch over if something fails and be back up and running in literally minutes because your files would already all be there. And so these are just some options you've got for what you would like to set up. For this, I'm gonna set up rsync and I'm gonna go ahead and click next. So now we're going to call it a rsync compatible server and we're going to enter the IP address or in this case, the host name of my FreeNAS build. And so that is freenas.spacerex.co, which is locally what I've got it set up as. And so now for the username, I called it Synology and the password was one, two, three, four, five, six. And so now when we do this downtick error, it's gonna be the moment of truth. And look, that backup module successfully came back. So that is the backup module that we set up in our free NAS build. So we're gonna select it. And now it's going to create a directory. And perfect, that means we are all set up and running and authentication has worked. So now we're gonna go ahead and click next. All right, and so now we just need to select which folders we'd like it to back up. For this, I'm just gonna back up ISO files, which is my standard, hey, this is a backup I need to do. But you can go through, and I've got better videos on how to use hyper backup, but it's incredibly powerful. It really allows you to select the exact files you'd like backed up, and even how you'd like that done. You can have complex file filters and so much stuff like that, and which is one of the reasons why I really like hyper backup. So now I'm not gonna back up any packages. And now, we just get to do the last configurations. One thing, if you're putting this off network, it's not a bad idea to have a bandwidth limitation, especially if you're worried about having a huge backup task taking up all the network speed. And so you can set those up and it's really helpful. And we're also gonna to wanna to set up client-side encryption, which I would always recommend if you're running hyper backup. All right, and now we just go ahead and click next. We will not set up backup rotation, though you could. And now we just click backup now. All right, and just like that, hyper backup is running and backing up to our free NAS build or true NAS build using the rsync module protocol that makes it really easy for these configurations to occur. It is now going to back everything up using the power of hyper backup with the simplicity of the rsync datum. All right, well, I guess that's it for this tutorial. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.